My name's Jeff Nichols, and I work for Fireboard, where I'm their marketing lead. We've been uh, working with Yoder since their development of their pellet cookers uh, to give them our technology to run their cookers. We create uh, boards for them that are called OEM boards in-house here in Kansas City and uh, ship them to at Yoder, Kansas, where they assemble them into their pellet grills. The technology is basically like what you would get if you were to take a fireboard drive and a fan and hook it up to your wood-burning uh, smoker at home. Earlier this year, Yoder developed a wood-fired oven for their uh, pellet grills or their pellet cookers. You're able to remove parts of your existing uh, Yoder, just lift out, no tools are required, and then you can drop in this new diffusion plate, a pizza stone, and the oven housing, which kind of looks like an outdoor pizza oven, given the fact that the top of the Yoder oven is designed to take uh, a skillet or as a warming space, you can actually cook on top of the oven itself. So that inspired me to bring in a couple of cast iron pans and see if I could make an entire meal from the Yoder. I turned the Yoder on and put uh, and set the pit temperature to 350 degrees. So after about 20 minutes, that's when you can actually go to your cooking temperature, which uh, what we did was uh, 550 degrees was the set temperature of the oven. Cutting up the potatoes um, into bite-sized pieces and then uh, tossing them with some olive oil and some seasonings. And then they're ready for the pan. Pan that I uh, preheated inside the oven, pulled out and dumped the potatoes, olive oil and seasoning into that uh, and let it go. About 10 minutes and then a stir of the potatoes and then another 10 minutes uh, to just make sure that the, uh, the, the potatoes were getting uh, cooked evenly. And in that time frame, you're in the kitchen making up um, the, uh, the Brussels sprouts and the pork chops. Pork chops were really simple. It was just a matter of putting some rub on um, and then cut up the Brussels sprouts. Threw into a steamer and par-cooked them. At this point in time, the potatoes, we waited a little bit for them to be completely cooked. Pulled the potatoes out, put them on top of the oven to hold for the rest of the cook. Pork chops went in their skillet hung out uh, for about three minutes per side, and then let them cook uh, for until we reached the internal temp of uh, 160. That's where using the spark was really handy. Um, that was a critical time frame. I had the Brussels sprouts pre-steamed, and the Brussels sprouts were gonna be going into the pan where the pork chops were cooked up, using that all the flavor off of the pork chops and the pork chop fat. So we wanted to uh, use that pan and cook the Brussels sprouts while the pork chops were getting their appropriate rest time. So getting that uh, and being able to, to, to turn that quickly, the spark helped with that. Uh, once the Brussels sprouts spent some time uh, in the oven, really about three minutes and then a stir and another three minutes, they were coming out really nicely roasted, had a nice amount of char and burn on them. We put them on a sheet pan and let them finish out and crisp up a little bit more on the sheet pan. So we hooked the pro up um, to, because you know we're kind of curious to see, that's completely not necessary. Um, Yoder doesn't want you to do that. It's not that it ruins anything, but it's just an unnecessary step. But being that this was here at Fireboard and we had um, a Fireboard 2 Pro that was able to measure temperatures uh, over a thousand degrees, we kind of wanted to be able to see what the temperatures were doing inside the oven. So we took a, a pro and um, unofficially snaked in uh, some, uh, some probes, um, and we have uh, three. And we had temperature readings of over 800 degrees when just the uh, Yoder was set at 550. So the oven is very efficient. It can really get some uh, flame and heat going inside it. Um, and uh, it's, it's definitely good for some uh, fast and hot cooking.